Hi guys, how are you? So this is the third video of the Simple Microservice project and we had completed our JWT creator file, the main.go file completely and in our JWT parser file, uh, we had done quite a bit of work where we had created our handle request function, main function is authorized function and now, <coughs> sorry, we want to continue where we left off, all right? So uh, whatever, let me just remove my headphone actually. So um, if you had sent a token in the header, that means if it's not equal to nil, then we want to do something, right? If there's no header, there's no uh, token, then obviously we won't do anything. But if there's a token, then we want to perform the other steps, which basically involve parsing the token, all right? So how do you, how do you go ahead and start parsing it? So what you do is basically you say jwt.parse, which is a function given to us by jwt uh, library. And this has the function to uh, basically parse the token that you're receiving. Now, um, this is very similar to if you if you use Node.js and if you use the JWT um, package in Node.js, it's very similar because uh, you pass two things to this function as well. So you pass the header, which is basically your token. <coughs> and you pass a function. So if you've used Node.js, then you would probably know that this is exactly what uh, we do there as well, right? And this function uh, takes the token, which is of type jwt.token, and it re returns an interface, or it returns an error, all right? Now, just be sure that inside this function, uh, like this function is not ended right inside jwt.parse so in jwt.parse you're sending the the token and this function and now you have to define this function and it's all in it's all happening inside this jwt.parse all right so that means that um, before the last round bracket you create the function definition for this particular function all right so in jwt.parse you're passing the token and you're passing this whole function that and the whole function definition we'll be uh, creating right now Sorry, my battery was low, so I had to uh, plug in my laptop and now I'm back again. All right, so um, like I said, you know, we have to define this entire function here itself. So we have to write the function definition, which basically will have, uh, so for, you'll do three things, right? First, you'll check what's the method that you're using. So uh, we are using, as you know, HS256, right? But we want to check if, um, the token that we've received is of a different signing method. So like, let's say signing method HMAC, which is another signing method, right? So we want to check that first, right? If um, if it's HMAC, then obviously you want to return that it's an invalid signing method as in we can't process this. And then you want to check two things, right? What are those two things? You want to check the AOD, which is the audience, and you want to check ISS, which is the issuer. So our issuer is this and our audience is this, right? So we want to check both of those things. And how do you do that? So what you'll do is you will have uh, a function token dot claims dot JWT dot map claims dot verify audience. Inside that audience, you'll pass odd AUD, all right? So I'll, I'll get AUD and pass it here. and. <clears throat> the other thing that I want to uh, check, like I said, is the uh, issuer. So the function will be very similar to this. So we'll just token dot claims dot jwt dot map claims dot verify issuer. So we have audience and issuer, and we are checking that using jwt dot map claims. And then we'll obviously put some conditions here, right? So now let's start filling in. Uh, so we've created like an outline and now let's start filling in the details. Now this function, right, the first function where we have to check the um, token method, the signing method. Here we'll say, if everything is okay, then you'll say, if everything is not okay, then you'll return nil and you'll return an error. So you'll say error f invalid signing method right so this is done and now you want to get your hands on aud so how do you get hands on aud you you know that aud is billing dot jwt go dot io right you know that and here you'll pass your aud right to check if this is the uh, right one 
and uh, whatever you get from here you'll capture in this variable called check audience and if check audience is false then you'll return nil fmt dot error f invalid audience and similarly you'll do something here you'll first you'll get your hands on the issuer which is in our case jwt go dot io and here you'll use this variable called check iss and then again what you did here you'll do the same thing here all right so i won't copy and paste i'll just type it out if um, check iss return <coughs> nil comma fmt dot error f invalid iss all right but if everything went well i want to return the signing key and check for error if error not equal to nil then we'll print f w comma error dot error now i'll do a couple of things uh, and after that everything will make sense to you right so this is the most important line in this function according to me so if you say to token is valid then you will return an endpoint sorry endpoint w comma r else so let me just type it out and let me explain to you what's happening here i'm pretty sure you're quite confused um, with what's happening no authorization token provided all right so the else needs to be here sorry right after that so yeah just copy <coughs> this complete and else statement and cut sorry cut it and put it after this bracket why this bracket because here if you have a token then you'll do all of this stuff if you don't have the token you'll just send a response w is your response header you'll say no authorization token provided all right because no token was provided in the header right so that's clear now let me talk about this part right if token which is the most important line here so what's happening here as you can see is this function right um this is authorized function is supposed to return an endpoint an endpoint uh, basically has w and r right so that's what this function is returning endpoint which with w and r that's what n is authorized was supposed to return in the first place now the way we are calling is authorized is like this see so in, in your is authorized function you uh, firstly send your endpoint and you also return an endpoint like the http handler from here all right so you send your home page which is your um, you know function it's a, it's a handler and you also return a handler from here so what you're doing is you're just checking everything if you know the person is authorized to use that uh, you know that handler and if only if that person is authorized to use it you return that endpoint otherwise you can't access that endpoint all right i hope that makes sense so is authorized takes an endpoint and returns uh, endpoint or the handler or whatever right and it's just basically to checking for the token and if uh, the user has access to that uh, endpoint and only then returning that endpoint and here you could have you know m multiple endpoints you could return multiple endpoints from here uh, right now we're just running the home page one because that's what you're passing to is authorized uh, function right so if the user is authorized then you can access the home page uh, handler or the router where you have all these uh, where you just print out super secret information here you can have anything else also you can have multiple different things happening out here but here we're just showing super secret information that's all right so now the project is complete as in your <coughs> creator file is complete and your parser file is complete there's not much happening creator just creates a token using client audience issuer and, ex uh, and expiry time and uh, your uh, parser just uses the jwt.parse method and uh, you know it has this function which basically returns a signing key right and it takes also a, a token the jwt uh, method takes a token and this function which basically checks your audience your issuer and your signing method these three things it's checking 
and this outside function which is uh, is authorized returns a http uh, handle function which basically is the endpoint all right so i hope all of that uh, makes sense uh, if you still have any doubts, like I've tried to explain every single line, but if you still have any doubts, please feel free to put it in the comments below and I'll uh, help you out. Not a problem. All right. Uh, it's a simple function. So I didn't probably uh, dive down very deep into explanation. It's very simple. And also we have just completed the whole JWT token series. So that's why I'm also uh, not going into much depth here, but uh, it's a very small program, right? Both of these are just below 50 lines each as the smallest project that we've done on our channel till now. So I hope everything is clear. If it's not clear, Please put it in the comments below. I'll help you out. All right. So now it's time to start testing our uh, project. So to test this program, you already know that I need three different terminals because I've shown you in the demo, right? Right now, what we'll do is we'll start the servers on both of these different um, files. So firstly, I'm inside JWT Creator and in the other terminal, I'm inside API. So we'll try and start both of these servers and we'll encounter some issues and then we'll try to solve them. So we'll say go run main.go. So the JWT creator seems to be working fine. And here, <coughs> go run main.go. So here we have some issues, right? So let's try and fix those. In this file, we have an issue on line 50 and line 53. So let's go to our um, JWT, sorry, the API, line 50 and line. So in line 50 and 53, the issues that we're having as unexpected else <coughs> the non declaration statement. So I think if we take this on the line above, everything should go away because right now Golang is saying that this else statement is unexpected in the sense it's not tying it to this if statement, right? So now this error should go away, but I'm expecting many more errors, all right? Right, so once you run it, now that error has gone away, but there are so many more types of errors. <clears throat> so firstly, the one that I can see here is this simple one is on line 50, you can't use printf. Yes, that makes sense because you have to use f printf with p small. So once you save that and you run it again, yeah, so you'll have all these different issues which have not been resolved, right? Now, <coughs> as you can see, one is on 18, line 18, 40, 41, and 44 so we can start from here on 44 it says undefined token is undefined all right so let's first handle that so for undefined token and error all right so the issue is that uh, the token and error are undefined all right this token is undefined and also this error is undefined it's saying on line 40 and 41 so firstly this you need to fix this is actually e for error and here uh, one big thing that i have missed is that it should have been token and error and then we'll capture the whatever's coming from jwp.parts inside token and error and that's what we are checking here all right so this uh, i missed by mistake so uh, this should fix these two errors right and now on line 41 it says you can't use yeah that's also right because we need to have f printf on this line so we've taken care of token error and uh, this as well an undefined error also we have fixed now come these errors whereas on line 18 it's giving us a lot of errors right and that's because of a very small mistake which is basically it's it has big handler func here and not handle func and now i hope a lot, a lot of these errors should go away or at least all of them should go away yes so all of the errors have gone away we, we can see server and the first one we can see this the server running for this one as well and now all we have to do is uh, run a new uh, instance for uh, the terminal and then we have to start curling on these two uh, local hosts addresses ports all right to test it i've opened up a new terminal completely where we'll start curling so we'll say curl HTTP localhost 8080. 80. This will create a token for us. We'll copy this token and paste it in our notepad. And from there, you have to run this command. See, so this command is basically curl HTTP localhost 9001. 
and minus minus header and you'll pass the token like this with a space here once you do that you'll see super secret information you have to do this within one minute otherwise the token will expire because you've kept the expiry as one minute you can even ex uh, extend the expiry so that you don't face that issue but for now since we've kept it one minute we have to like paste it quickly all right so your project is working completely fine you have two microservices running one on port 8080 the other on port 9001 and this is a very simple microservice project congrats you have you now know what microservices are how they work how they run on different ports how you can use a token from uh, create token on one service and use it on another service and uh, things will only get more uh, so we'll build up from here and we'll build really complex microservices but this i wanted to show you this project because this is like the base the core of everything right and now all the projects that we'll build will build up on this and we'll have more and more complicated microservices projects uh, till the time we have we start having docker kubernetes and jenkins automatically deployed microservices and then we'll mix microservices with some serverless functions as well so I'll, that's that gets quite interesting so i'll show you that as well okay so <clears throat> uh, i'll take your leave now uh, because we've completed the series so there's no point of me hanging around out here and thanks a lot for watching and do subscribe to this channel if you haven't subscribed because you'll get really awesome content here and thank you and see you in the next episode